on August 31st, 2024, at approximately 5.23 a.m., a 911 call came in for the address of 329 Knapp Avenue. The call initially came in as a fire at the location. Rondequoit Police, as well as personnel from the Rondequoit Fire Department, St. Paul Fire Department, the Point Pleasant Fire Department, and Rondequoit Ambulance responded to the location. The fire inside the structure was quickly addressed and brought under control. While searching the location, several individuals were located inside and found to be deceased. The names of the deceased are Fraime Ubaldo, he's a 30-year-old male from 3029 Knapp Avenue. I'm sorry about pronunciation on this. Marangeli Moreno Santiago, 26-year-old female from 329 Knapp Avenue. Evangeline Ubaldo Moreno, 4-year-old female from 329 Knapp Avenue. And Sebastian Ubaldo Moreno, 2-year-old male, 329 Knapp Avenue. Sorry. Due to the condition of the bodies, it was readily apparent that this was going to be a homicide investigation. Officers on scene worked with fire personnel to ensure it was safe to be inside. After it was determined to be safe for fire and police personnel, the location was secured to start a methodical investigation. Crime scene technicians and investigators from the Irondequoi Police Department and the Monroe County Fire Bureau worked diligently to process the scene. Due to the nature of the scene, our processing took almost two days. Limited information was initially given out due to the need to inform family members that had to be located in other states. Peer counselors were brought in immediately for the initial emergency responders and remain available for the upcoming days. Anyone with information is asked to call the Ironicoi Police Department at 585-336-6000 or if you wish to remain anonymous, please call Crime Stoppers at 585-423-9300. I apologize. Um, I know you guys have questions. Um, this was a horrific scene. Um, in almost 32 years of doing this job, I've never seen anything like it. So, um, there's a reason why we don't put all this information out at first. And I, I get a little frustrated, and not with you, uh, I get a little frustrated with a lot of people on social media and anything else wanting to have instant gratification, put them uh, information out there immediately. There's a reason why we don't do it, because the last thing I want is a family member to hear horrific details about their family's death through social media or through the media. I want it to hear it right straight from her mouth. Think about if it was your family, think about how we would want to be treated ourselves. So that's the reason why this has taken just a little bit of time. Also, we took two days to make sure that we methodically cleared that location. Um, the fire uh, did not help, but it didn't hinder us. We wanted to make sure that we were, went floor to floor and didn't miss any piece of information that needed to be collected to ultimately bring these monsters to justice. That's all I can say is for what you do to adults is fine, but when you murder innocent children, there's no excuse for it. And I have no excuse for some of the things I say and the way I, uh, I will conduct myself talking about these people. Um, I have the fire department here, the fire chiefs. Um, obviously, immediately afterwards, you talk about the peer counseling stuff, and you can see that it still hits you, especially if you're a parent. Um, we have peer counselors. Uh, the fire department has been you know, readily uh, using, utilizing them. Um, we'll, after we get a chance to take a break and take a breath, and collect our thoughts, um, hopefully, or maybe we'll be using those uh, same uh, counselors. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm trying to answer them. Is there anything on the cause of death yet, or, uh, or you just, do you know we just can't reveal it? Or I, I do know, uh, and I won't reveal it. Is that just because of the investigation? Yes, absolutely. Chief, any idea who these monsters are? At this point, no. Um, but obviously we have a lot of leads that we're working, and so my investigative uh, uh, staff is right here, and they're second to none, and they've been working around the clock diligently, and you know, having to actually process that scene also. Um, uh, Sergeant Fitzak is over here. He's led the uh, technicians in actually processing the scene, so um, we're dealing with a lot of stuff here. We're dealing with um, an investigation going on one side. We're dealing with um, handling evidence on the other side and 
dealing with trying to keep the community together. And so, like I said, it's um, our officers have seen a lot, but they're professionals and they're doing their job. And maybe after you know we get a chance to actually take a breath, you know, might be able to think a little bit more about it. Chief, it appears this was a family. Yes. Um, are you able to get into a little bit of the connections there? You know, um, just a very young pair of siblings. Yeah, absolutely, and two parents, two parents and two siblings. So that's what that's what I ask you to think about is. You know, this is Labor Day, it's supposed to be joyous day, spending time off with your family. This family doesn't have that anymore. This family is forever going to be, you know, I mean, half their family's gone in an instant. Chief, do you, do you know a motive yet, or are you just, is that anything you can talk about? I, I don't have a motive, and it would be way too, okay. way too early to speculate on that. Can you say anything about whether there was ever any problem at that house? No, family? no, we, that's, it's a quiet street. I mean, we're there for regular calls for service, but I mean, not overtly or, or uh, any more than any other place in the town. And no, it's a lot of great neighbors when we were out there. The neighbors all came out. Everybody was very supportive. They helped us. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, it's it, it's a nice street. But you did say, I think originally, correct me if I'm wrong, that you yeah. feel that these individuals were targeted in some way, it wasn't a random? Correct, yeah, and I obviously, because of the investigation, I, I'm not gonna go into that. Do you know yes, sir. about the start of the fire yet? Um, oh, oh, I can let you know, one of the fire personnel because the only thing I know, know about a fire is lighting the lighter. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah. so Shane Metcalf, Chief of the Ironic Lake Fire Department. Um, at this time, it's still under investigation. So as Chief Peters said, the uh, Monroe County Fire Investigators that work through the Fire Bureau, they'll determine the cause and origin of the fire. But that'll take some time, obviously, with the, uh, the seriousness of the incident. Uh, everything was done very slowly and very methodically. Uh, so it, it'll take some time, um, but it's still under investigation. So with something like this, the chief mentioned that you're going floor by floor to make sure you don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. What sort of evidence would you gather or you already gather? Yeah, so I would defer that question to the, the fire investigators. Unfortunately, they're not here today, but uh, they followed a similar process that the police department followed. Uh, just extremely methodical. Um, their investigation is obviously trying to determine how the fire started uh, and if there are any information or evidence that they can give to the police department they do that but same as IPD did they went uh, methodically through the house uh, they were there with the police investigators until almost 9 p.m. that night uh, so they worked very very hard to determine the cause. When you arrive at something like this and there's the fire scene at a home um, a lot of times you might have neighbors saying you know there's people inside I mean what happened when you arrived at scene? Yep. Yeah. So we got the call uh, just as a police department and uh, the ambulance did uh, at 523 for a house fire. Uh, crews arrived pretty quickly thereafter within four minutes uh, and were alerted that potentially there were people inside the house. Uh, the first thing we're thinking at 530 in the morning is folks are sleeping, folks are home, you know, there's cars in the driveway. So the firefighters immediately began to search. They started um, where we would most likely find victims in a house fire, in bedrooms and sleeping presumably. So they searched the second floor, they searched the first floor, found some different fires throughout the building, and then ultimately found uh, the deceased victims in the basement. So at that point, uh, obviously with the suspicious nature of what they had encountered, we pulled all the fire department personnel out, turned the incident over to the police department, and then really just supported them uh, until they no longer needed us. When you say different fires throughout the building, does that mean there was likely multiple spots the fire started or just it was a natural? So I can't comment too much on that right now. Uh, they, they encountered multiple fires that they extinguished, um, but more details will come out with the investigation. Any estimate on how many suspects you're looking for? Chief, how about you say? No, um, I, it would be way too early to speculate on that. I think we, everybody who's lived in this community for a long time has experienced a lot of homicide. But I can't recall something like this. Neither can I. Um, and I think that what our viewers would like some understanding is to why a family would be murdered, why two children would be murdered. Can you help our viewers and our community understand why this happened? I don't think anybody can explain why that happened. Adults do what adults do. But kids are innocent. So take that for what it's worth. There's mom was being a mom, protecting her children. Dad, 
I, I, I can't say, but nobody should ever be able to do this or be able to think that they could do that to a child. So let's just leave it at that. How, how are your, your officers uh, taking this? Hard thing for anybody to process. Yeah, so our officers, like I said before, are very professional. They've been working right straight through, taking breaks to get some sleep, do what they have to do, um, and they're just plugging away. Um, we're monitoring them closely. Um, quite frankly, we have, you know, a volume of evidence to be able to get in, submitted to lab work, put in uh, our custody, holding on to it. Once we get that stuff done that needs to be done, so that there's nothing that's lost as far as uh, when, the, when this does come to trial, uh, that you know evidence is suppressed or anything, we'll make sure that it's done correctly. Then we can take a break, get some sleep, possibly do a little decompression, and then sometimes maybe you know maybe that's when you know that's why we want to make sure that our peer counselor is available for all that stuff afterwards. Is there anything else you can tell us about the family? The kids go to school around here. Uh, yeah, they were they were two and four years old, so they weren't even in school yet. Um, uh, obviously, that is the area of uh, the East Rondequoit High School um, uh, school district, but um, I, quite frankly, I, I, I don't think it had any impact on you know uh, where they were going to school or anything. And there's no criminal history for the parents, or <sighs> domestic calls, or anything along those lines. There. No. No. So. Um, I can't say any more about that, so, but it was, yeah, there was not a domestic incident. There was, we, uh, I think the only time we ever talked to the family was we had a stolen car in the area and asked if they saw anything. That was it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it's just, yeah, I, I can't say anything more about that. Are you able to tell us how long the family might have been living there? Uh, I think they bought the house maybe two to three years ago. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, from what I understood is, uh, yeah, I think they, talking to neighbors and talking to family, I think it's anywhere between two to three years ago they bought the house. We can just hear the emotion in your voice, yeah. right? Um, your tenure with law enforcement in this agency, you said earlier you've never seen anything like this. No. I mean, how, how does it fall on the grand scheme of things? It's the worst thing I've ever seen. I'll remember it for life. Simple as that. I know you can't talk about cause of death. Mm -hmm. Not trying to, you know, cause any problems in mm -hmm. the investigation. I think people are just trying to wonder if they, maybe just to help them get through this, because I think mm -hmm. viewers and all of us are trying to comprehend this. Do they die in the fire before the fire? I don't know. Just is there anything that you can offer? I can't. Um, uh, it, no, I. It, again, it's too early on the investigation to sit there and say that, but you know we're not ruling anything out, and that's the reason why we come into an investigation like this, and instead of being narrowly focused, it's wide open. So we want to make sure that um, we wait till the autopsies are done, so that we can talk to the medical examiner and get a cause of death, um, um, why the fire was set, why this even uh, this um, uh, chain of events was set in motion. Um, so everything's available to us. Um, I don't know if it was, uh, well, I do know. Um, <laughs> I have a good idea why, but uh, it's just too early to speculate on, you know, why this happened, but. It was clear based on what you said here, what you said earlier, she was at some point when you guys got there, it became clear this was a homicide. Yes, sir. Not Correct. Yeah, it's just, um, as I said in uh, the press release right there, just looking at the condition of the bodies, you can tell that it was, these were not wounds consistent with um, the bodies weren't they didn't have damage to them consistent with uh, being in a fire. Chief, and I apologize if you answered this and I missed it. Um, did you think the fire was set in an attempt to try and blur the investigation? Or something about that? It, it could be. I don't know. Um, you know, if there was a struggle inside, started a fire, done other thing, high stuff. But um, again, it's too early to speculate about that. We haven't. Uh, okay. Like the police investigation, it'll take uh, a while to piece everything together. Uh, the, the fire bureau investigators will take the same exhaustive process to try and determine everything, but at this time, it's still undetermined. What is? How um, close are you to the Do you have any idea for suspects? 
uh, yeah, that would be that would be totally speculative. And obviously, in a situation like this, I'm not going to tip my hand for anything. We're going to keep everything close to the vest. That's the reason why I was very slow with forthcoming with information. These kids deserve it, and I don't want anything to compromise this investigation. So, people's desire for information doesn't trump these little kids' lives. And I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that. Do you know if she, I mean, you mentioned she had to reach people out of state and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they have local family at all as well? Um, I think there is some local family on one side of the family, and then, you know, other, uh, the other side of the family, uh, outside of the family, so. Outside of the state, I'm sorry. Yes. I guess, um, you know, we've talked about this already, but when it comes to the pursuit for suspects, mm -hmm. depending how many, mm -hmm. I mean, do you have any sort of confidence that that will be resolved sooner rather than later? I don't know about sooner, but it will be resolved. This will be something that our, that our department will work on 100%. Um, we won't stop until we do solve it. Like I said, we have, we're starting to get some good leads, but also this is the reason why we have this, and I'm giving you as many details as I can right now because I think once people realize the gravity of the situation and the disgusting nature of the situation and the fact that children were involved. I'm hoping that people put away any type of um, supposed fear or anything else of, you know, not want to cooperate with the police. But I mean, these kids deserve it. They had a whole life in front of them. And they, you know, they were just innocent little kids. Did the suspects break into the house? Did they know the family? I uh, again, it's going to be speculative to be able to talk about that right there. I have no idea what the relationship between the suspects and the family. Um, so, like I said, we're, we're we have eyes wide open to try and sit there and you know come up with a motive. So I don't want to pigeonhole anything. Is that it? Okay. Thank you. Is it um, Andre, can I chat with you for a second? Yeah. Randy, we're going to Yeah, good to see you.